Today I'm installing the flap hinge blocks. This was cut from a 9 inch long piece of a, uh, a beveled balsa stock. This is going to go in here against here. This balsa block is going to have to be sanded down to uh, be at the same angle as this surface, so it's going to take a considerable amount. But the, the reason I'm showing this and the reason you see this top of wing a uh, piece of paper here on the wing itself is because uh, sometimes you want to remind yourself of which surface this is that you're working on because this hinge block uh, if you look over here at the cross section for the wing this hinge block is here okay and it looks as though, if you're not paying attention, this is the bottom of the wing. And the hinge block is this way, not this way. And if you get confused and you think, oh, this is the bottom of the wing, and you go to put this block in, you go and put it in like this, and you try to sand that, and you're like, oh, that looks good. Well, before you know it, you've ruined this block because you forgot that this is the top of the wing. So just a friendly reminder, Sometimes label parts of the wing or whatever you're working on, the surfaces, just to eliminate any confusion on your part, uh, especially if you're working late at night, uh, to make sure that you place your parts uh, on the proper side and uh, don't make a mistake of putting it in wrong or trying to glue it in wrong and then finding out that, whoops, you, uh, if you had just labeled it, you would eliminate any errors. I thought I would just point this out uh, in case I never mentioned it before. If you notice here, I've pinned a piece of paper to this block of balsa, and you can see that it's labeled balsa shaped aileron hinge blocks. Now, when you get out your wood for your kit, or if you're even scratch building, it's, it's an excellent idea to take the time to label all the pieces that are going to be used to build your plane. One, so that you ensure that your inventory is complete and they didn't miss a piece or you for didn't forget to make a piece for your scratch kit. And two, uh, later on you're not going to remember which piece was what. Uh, you're going to have to have to measure it and verify it uh, by labeling it such as this. And I did the same thing for the flat hinge uh, blocks when I uh, installed those. I reached underneath down here underneath my table, my workbench, and I just grabbed the pieces such as these that are already labeled. And that saves me a lot of time with rifling through a bunch of wood and trying to guess. Uh, everything is already labeled and ready to go, and I don't have to take any time to find it or to guess whether or not it's the right piece. I know for sure and it saves me a lot of time and, and uh, guesswork. I thought I would just mention that and uh, give you that little bit of information for uh, future use. Well, I finished up the uh, flap hinge blocks as you can see here and over here and here I've also installed the uh, servo bay uh, blocks as well, servo hatch cover uh, rails I should say, and those have been placed in each uh, point on the wing and one final piece before the wing will get prepared for uh, bolting the retracts down is to put in the uh, aileron hinge blocks and those will go of course in here on each side for installation of the hinges themselves. I'll be using uh, Robart hinges for those. Beveling hinge blocks. Most hobbyists starting out might get a little uh, concerned about their word they're going to sand too much. Uh, in this case, if we look at this hinge block, you can see that because of the, the angle that this spar is at for the uh, 
trailing edge of the wing that this block does not line up against there. It actually has to be beveled. So if you're confused and you're wondering, well, how do I bevel this properly? Well, the side that touches is the side you have to sand, and you're going to have to sand that down until it meets this edge up here, and then slowly keep sanding until you push this in and it becomes flush with this trailing edge. Uh, I'm going to demonstrate and then I'll put it in to show you. Okay, so I have this aileron hinge block. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, okay, this side doesn't need to be sanded. Obviously, this bottom does. So I'm going to mark here just to give you a uh, some help with sanding uh, orientation. What I'm going to do is I'm going to slowly sand at an angle and I don't want to take material off this top edge, right? We don't want to take material off of there, we're looking to bevel it. So if you look you can see that it's already started to be beveled. We're going to keep sanding just a little bit at a time. This is the key element right here. If we sand too aggressively and we sand too quickly, we're going to whittle down this hinge block to nothing because we're going to keep doing trial and error and we're going to do trial and error because we're sanding too much. Uh, the best solution is to take your time, sand a little bit, try the block, see how much more you have to sand.